You are listening to Crosswalk. Mailman by day, mad at the world by night. Next, Roger Rose, the creative force behind the group Mad at the World, talks with music journalist Brian Quincy Newcomb. Uh, talk to me about uh, what made you decide to do it all by yourself. Oh, well, a number of reasons. Um, probably the most convenient reason is just that I did all, a lot of pre-production on the project. Um, you know, the computer played 80% of that whole album, and it was a lot of it was se sequenced. And you did it mostly in your own basement, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the pre-production before I went into the studio was was done in my my home studio. Yeah, and when I got the privilege of producing my first project, you know, I could I could have it the way I wanted before I brought it in the studio. Now you were you're a mailman. Yes, that's correct. Are you still a mailman? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. I haven't, you know, the 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 royalty checks haven't, you know. <laughs> overwhelmed me as of this point so yeah i'm still delivering mail um so when you're walking your route you know do you think of yourself as the mailman or do you think of yourself as this mad of the world uh possibly big time superstar <laughs> oh i have i have hopes for the future to be able to to be able to you know do music full-time it's definitely my love and yeah that dream of being able to do music full-time keeps me going on the job but yeah i'm not fully into the job. Yeah. Has has your life changed much since the record? No, not really. I'm I'm the same person. I I actually uh spiritually I I I feel, you know, more responsibility now because you know, I've been given a lot so I'm I'm sure a lot more is uh, expected of me. We had spoken before and you said that one of the influences on you was Depeche Mode. How did the influence of that band infect inflect within your thinking on the music? I was looking. Uh, I was looking through the uh, the Bible the other day, and, and there's a this pretty cool verse that kind of talks about that. It's Second uh, Second Corinthians two, excuse me, Second Corinthians seven ten, and it says, "For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance that is without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death." And you know, like the Depeche Mode type stuff. You know, they, they pretty much just deal about the emptiness and the uh, hopelessness of the world. The void. Yeah, and, and like, you know, in this, this verse here, it just, you know, it spells it out, you know, the, the sorrow of the world without God just produces death. And with this album, we, well, I guess me, since I wrote it, you know, I was talking about the sorrows of this world, but but I had the um, the hope of God mixed in with the lyrics, and, and that's cool because, you know, that kind of sorrow, like it says in this verse, leads you to repentance. In the song, Taking the Easy Way Out, it seems to me you're addressing a darker uh, social issue, uh, the one of suicide in our culture. And I, I can think of several lyrics where taking the easy way out is referred to. Um, you seem to have something different to say. Easy way out, again, it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it is an anti-suicide tune, and it's, it's spelling out that I believe that you know, the suggestion of suicide is actually from, you know, Satan himself, and and kind of like even that verse I was talking about earlier, that um, 2 Corinthians uh, 7.10, just, you know, it says, the sorrow of the world without God, you know, that whole big question, all that leads to is death. The uh, title track of the record and the name of the band, I'm sure, has raised some people's hackles. Um, have you had any response to the name of your band, Mad at the World? Oh, yeah, uh, some, but, you know, a lot of people... A lot of people can can understand what what the name is about, and um, again, like First uh, John two fifteen is uh, what two fifteen sixteen seventeen is that the verse that talks about love not the world, neither the things of the world, because if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God in the world, and it's lust pass away. But uh, he that does the will of God abides forever, kind of thing. Roger Rose, our guest today on Crosswalk. <laughs> You've been listening to Crosswalk with your hosts, Kathy Lockwood and Mark Fisher. Our guest today was Roger Rose, interviewed by Brian Quincy Newcomb. We'd like to thank Mike McLean and Frontline Records for their help. For more information about this program, write to us at... Crosswalk, 2185 Hampton Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri, 63139. Crosswalk is a production of the International Lutheran Layman's League.